Hi, I'm Kate. Welcome to this Smith & Nephew Wound Club online module on hard to heal wounds, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. Today, we're discussing the physiological aspects of hard to heal wounds. After completing this, you will know what defines a wound as hard to heal, what influencing factors there are, and what physiological changes occur as a result of a wound becoming hard to heal. There are a number of different descriptions of a wound that fails to heal, and the more common terms are stalled, static, chronic, non-healing, and challenging. For the purpose of this presentation, we will refer to these wounds as hard to heal. Firstly, let's look at the burden of hard to heal wounds. There are 2.2 million patients with a wound every year, and nearly half of these are hard to heal wounds. The cost of treating these wounds is high, 5.3 billion pounds, which is comparable to managing obesity. The majority of these costs are incurred in the community setting, with most of these patients being treated by primary care services. These costs have potential to increase in the future as the number of wounds is growing and is predicted to increase at a rate of 11%. Therefore, I'm sure you can agree that it's really important to tackle these hard to heal wounds. We've acknowledged the wider financial burden to the NHS, but this impact affects clinicians and patients on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, the time it takes for a health professional to treat hard to heal wounds or the high numbers of dressings needed. The impact on a patient's quality of life cannot be underestimated with anxiety, pain and depression all reported as a result of a hard to heal wound. Let's expand on what a hard to heal wound is. By definition, a hard to heal wound is defined as one that fails to heal in an orderly and timely manner and does not exclude acute wound types. This definition might also apply to other wounds such as chronic wounds, which are often described as being stuck in the inflammatory phase of healing. There are numerous factors that influences wound healing. For example, patient related factors, namely patient age and comorbidities, wound related factors such as etiology, wound size and duration, and clinical factors such as staff skills and available resources. Due to the nature of these wounds being multifaceted, a comprehensive holistic assessment is vital for any patient with a wound to ensure that wound healing is optimised. The physiological changes within a wound can occur when the provision of nutrients, cell replication, regeneration of new tissue and the removal of waste materials are altered. These changes can be as a result of key abnormalities that occur in the hard to heal wound as a result of ischemia, abnormal or persistent inflammation and bio burden. As a focus for this session, we will look at these key aspects of wound healing in the hard to heal wound. These elements typically impact the wound healing process during the inflammatory phase and as a result of matrix metallonoproteases and bio burden levels. Normal wound healing occurs in four phases, hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation and maturation. These phases need to run in a sequential and orderly way in order to facilitate the wound to move into the next phase of healing. In hard to heal wounds, this is disrupted and the wound cannot progress past the inflammatory phase to begin its regeneration and repair that occurs in the proliferative phase. Due to wound healing being halted in this phase, the arrival of increased inflammatory cells and proteases in addition to reduction in growth factors and receptors further impacts the wound's interrupted healing state. Wound healing depends on the adequate provision of nutrients, cell replication, regeneration of new tissue and the removal of waste materials. Factors such as systemic disease, i.e. respiratory local ischemia, can impact the provision of adequate blood supply and in turn impede healing. 
In normal wound healing, matrix metalloproteases or MMPs are essential with many different roles in wound healing and tissue repair. As part of the inflammatory phase, they facilitate the removal of damaged extracellular matrix and bacteria. Due to the nature of a non-healing wound being stuck in the inflammatory phase of healing, this results in excess levels of proteases. Typically, MMPs help break down damaged tissue to prepare for new, healthy tissue to be created. However, in a hard to heal wound, the MMPs are present in increased levels. Excessive MMPs over a period of time leads to degradation of growth factors and receptors preventing angiogenesis, contraction and remodelling of the extracellular matrix. Heavy bio-burden can impact a wound from progressing into the next phase of wound healing. Establishing wound bio-burden is vital in order to facilitate the wound healing trajectory to resume. If bio-burden is left undiagnosed or left untreated, then the wound will remain in the inflammatory phase. So again, preventing the progression to the next phase of healing, proliferation. In summary, hard to heal wounds can be acute or chronic wounds and are those that have lost the ability to progress through the phases of healing in the expected time and sequence. The hard to heal wound can be as a result of patient related or wound related factors and assessment is vital in trying to manage these wounds. Lastly, an understanding of how the wound physiologically changes will support assessment and management to enable them to return to the normal healing trajectory. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. What stage of wound healing can a wound become stuck? Inflammatory. What key changes in a wound bed can cause it to become hard to heal? Ischemia, abnormal or persistent inflammation or bioburden. What is the estimated presence of bioburden in chronic wounds? Seventy-eight percent. Well done. You're now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you've learned and apply it to your daily practice. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts with a front sheet where you simply fill in your details and a back sheet, which allows for deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you're able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you.